this morning has invited you to come and sing to the praise and honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you join us as we sing together, crown him with many crowns. Let's stand together as we sing. There are songs that for all of us are landmark songs in our lives, moments where God took that song and imprinted it on our hearts, and when you hear it, it takes you back. Do you have songs like that? That's one for me. I love that song. That song takes me back to being a little kid at the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, and the very first time I went to the Cumberland Presbyterian Church, my Aunt Carol took me there, and she's here today. And I'm so thankful for all that God has done in my life and in your life. And so we've gathered this morning to worship Him, and we're so glad you're here. Whether you are in, in the room with us or you are joining us by virtual means, we're so thankful to get to worship with you. Our goal at First Baptist Church is to trust and follow Jesus Christ in every single moment that we live. And so we pray that today's service helps all of us do that better. In order to do that, we need to connect with each other. And if you've never connected with us at First Baptist Church, we want you to know that you matter to God and you matter to us. And so if you're in the room, in the pew rack, 
back in front of you, there's a card that says Get Connected. And we would love for you to take that and fill it out on the front and the back and drop it in the offering plate when that passes by a little later in the service. You can also fill that form out on your device, uh, your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever you got, uh, by going to our website at firstbaptistbg.org slash connect. But God has given us the gift of each other to stir one another toward love and good works. And we can't do that if we're not connected. So let's get connected. We also connect by reading God's Word together. They've literally done studies that have shown that there's nothing we can do that's more effective in helping us grow closer to God than reading His Word every single day. So we have a plan that we would love to give you. It's in our flock note message. It's on our website. It's in our church office. It's in our welcome center. We'd love for you to have it and to follow along with us. I'll tell you, something incredible happens when you read God's Word every day. You get to know the author a whole lot better. And it's a beautiful thing. So, let's do that. I'll tell you, I'm thankful for Nancy Crone. Nancy Crone is leading us in worship today. Pastor Ricky is out today. So, would you join me in thanking Nancy for her leadership today? And I want to let you know there are still some spots available for our Holy Land trip coming up in 2024. In fact, we've added a few more rooms. So if you're on the fence, there's room for you. All you have to do is let us know, contact us, and we'll get you connected with our travel agency and and put all that together. But I want to tell you, there is nothing like going to the Holy Land. And I can say that as one who has now been there. It's not just a neat trip. It is a life-changing experience, and I would love for you to experience it with us. We're going from April the 30th to May 10th, 2024, and there's room for you, so we would love for you to come. I got to go to our children's camp yesterday. They're up there right now at Cedarmore, which is just on the other side of Frankfurt, and they're having a blast. I went up just in time for going to the rec lake with them, so they suited me up in my life jacket, and I tried to blob some kids, but there's this 100-pound weight difference. If you're more than 100 pounds over the weight of the kid you're trying to blob, they won't let you do it. So I was just not able to blob anybody. That's fine, though. It's okay. We still had fun. But let me tell you what's really cool is these kids and their chaperones are having encounters with God. That's a beautiful thing. They're learning spiritual disciplines like how to read the Word and how to pray and and how to journal what God is teaching them and how to have a whole lot of fun along the way. So thank you for being a church that invests in the next generations. It's a huge deal. Vitally important that these kids learn what it means to trust and follow Jesus in every moment of life, and they're doing that right now. So thank you for that. Next Sunday, I really want you to be here. I want you to come because it is back to school Sunday at First Baptist Church, Sunday, August the 6th. Can you believe it? It's already here. I know. I'm thrilled. I'm so happy. So ha- I love my children, but I'm ready for them to go back to school. Um, so... <laughs> But next Sunday, we we want to do a couple of things. We want to honor educators, and whether you are a teacher, an administrator, you are in education in any way whatsoever from preschool to postgraduate and everywhere in between, come next Sunday. We want to pray for you. We're going to present Bibles to our rising first graders during the service. We're going to pray for our teachers and administrators and educators and And then that afternoon at 4.30, we're going to have a back-to-school bash that's going to start here in the sanctuary with, uh, we've got the the juggler for Jesus coming. So bring the kids. It's going to be awesome. And then we're going to go outside and we're going to have snow cones and hot dogs and popcorn and all the things as we celebrate a wonderful summer and look forward to a wonderful school year. So that's next Sunday, August the 6th, and we want you to be with us. I also want you to come tonight for Vespers at 6 o'clock out in the narthex. I'd love to see you there. Would you pray with me? Father, we love you, and we thank you for all the great things that are going on, all the many ways in which you are interacting with us. And Lord, we thank you because truthfully, you should have nothing to do with us. We're all sinners, and we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But yet you, in your great love for us, have come to us. You have drawn near to us, and so, Lord, now we draw near to you. In the presence and power of your Holy Spirit, we pray that you would allow us during this time to fix our attention on Jesus. 
And Lord, that Jesus would be high and lifted up, and all of us would be drawn unto him. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. How thankful we are that he is our friend, that we can turn to him even in our sinful state. And he is there to befriend us, to forgive us. Let's sing of that forgiveness and that grace that he offers as we sing, Jesus, what a friend of sinners. Would you stand with me as we sing?
Would you pray with me? And Father, that is our prayer. We do pray that you would shine, Jesus, on us and through us. Our land needs you so badly. There are so many people that are, that are suffering from just the impact of darkness. And Father, we know that through you and through the light of the truths that you provide, through the promise of eternity through you, you can bless anyone who will turn their heart towards you. And so we do pray that through our church and through the many other churches that lift up your name, that we will get to see people come to know you. Father, we thank you for your provision in our lives. And even now, this week, as we give back a portion to you that you've given to us, we pray that you will use it to lift your name up, to point people to you. And so we ask for your blessing on this time of tithes and offerings. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.